Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope everyone is staying safe, washing their hands. I hope everybody is also staying at home because that is one of the most important things you can do. Try to limit going outside as much as possible. I know it's hard. I have actually literally not, I went to Target one time in the past week and I was there for like 20 minutes and left because I literally needed stuff and I haven't been outside other than that. So for the full week, I've been stuck inside DIYing, crafting, and I actually want to start doing some Instagram lives so if you guys are not following me over on Instagram, Lone Fox Home, I'm gonna start doing some of those. But today we are gonna be doing DIY projects with stuff in your home. I wanted to do a video where I could share with you guys things you could do, like little tweaks and things to items you might already have or with supplies you might already have. Now, of course, this is not me saying that everybody's gonna have these supplies, but I feel like these are pretty normal supplies to have, especially if you already a DIY lover or maybe if you like crafting in general. I try to keep the supplies to a minimum for sure and keep a lot of the actual like tools and materials to household items that you might already have. My hair is absolutely crazy today, but honestly, when NakedWines.com reached out to me, I thought this was a great company to actually share with you guys because it allows you guys to get your favorite wines or try new wines or browse and explore like different types of wines online in the comfort of your own home and have it shipped to you so you don't have to leave at all, which is definitely super important, especially in the time we're living in right now. I'm personally not somebody to try new wine all the time. I kind of have some of my favorites and my favorite kind of wine is white wine wine and uh, rosé. I'm not a huge red wine drinker. I don't know what it is. I don't think I have an established palate, but it's okay. My unestablished palate does like white wine and rosé. And the packaging that they sent these in is insane. Like, I got these in the mail and I was like, how in the heck did this arrive so perfectly and nicely? And that is because they package these wines with excellent care, which is amazing. So like I mentioned, I got a lot of white wines and a lot of rosés because those are the ones that I typically like to drink the most. Um, and I love Sauvignon Blanc. That's my favorite kind of wine for sure. And then we also have some rosé. This is the one that I've currently been drinking. This is the Pinot Blanc, which is something I I've never even heard of before. Um, this is by G-Step. I thought this one was kind of cool because it actually has a little cap on it. And this one is a hard apple cider, which is something that I'm also very interested in. I love hard ciders as well. So this is one that I'm excited to try for sure. The thing I love about NakedWines.com as well is that they actually partner up with different wineries to support local winemakers. And how this works is that they actually help them grow the wine, which in return allows them to sell it on their site. And they're able to cut out marketing costs. They're able to cut out packaging costs. They're able to cut out all of the different like middlemen costs. So it reduces the price of the wine by so much while still giving a really amazing share to the actual winemaker. Nakedwines.com is giving you guys a massive $100 off of your first order. Yes, $100, which is crazy off your first order. If you head over to their website using the link in the description box below. So take a click, look over there. They have a billion wines to choose from you guys. There are so many options, customer reviews, and a lot of information on each bottle, which I think is amazing so definitely check out their site and let me know what you think but i think we should honestly get into the projects today because we need to make some stuff with items we have at home so let's go drink some wine and make some diys to start off our first project, we're gonna use some yarn and a crochet hook, and I'm also gonna be using this blanket that I've had for a while from Ikea. This is what it is, or how it's pronounced, and what I'm gonna start by doing is pushing my crochet hook through the corner of the blanket, pulling through the yarn, and then I'm going to be doing 20 chain stitches, which are essentially where you pull the yarn through the loop prior, or the loop that's on the crochet hook. You're gonna pull the yarn through, it creates a new loop, and you're going to continue this 20 times. Now, what we're essentially going to be doing to the edge of this blanket is we're going to be crocheting a scalloped edge on it, but then I'm going to be adding some tassels on it at the end. It looks really, really cute, very like anthropology. And if you guys could imagine this on like a really pretty cream knitted blanket done with like a light pink or like a black fringe would look so cute. So once you get to your next spot, you're going to push the crochet, crochet hook through the blanket, pull your yarn through and then do 20 more. So as you can see here, I'm pushing it through the blanket. You're going to wrap the yarn around, pull it through the blanket, then you're going to pull it through your original loop on the crochet hook and do 20 more chain stitches. And the 20 state chain stitches, once you end up crocheting back into the blanket, create like a half circle shape, which is going to be our scalloped edge. So you're going to continue this all the way down, again, keeping loose tension when doing the chain stitches. Once 
Once you get to the end, you can just push your crochet hook through and then pull the yarn through and just cut off the excess tail. So as you can see here, I cut it off and you can just pull the loop all the way through. So pull it through like this and you're going to just cinch it tight. And this is what we're creating on the ends of these scallops. They are little tassels. And how I'm doing this is I'm going to be wrapping it around my phone. I felt like my phone was easiest. I wrapped it 15 times around my phone. I'm cutting a small piece of yarn pushing it through all of the yarns on one side of my phone case. And then I'm gonna pull it all the way up to the top because we're gonna wanna tie this off. But I felt it was easiest to just pull it off and then really cinch it tight at the top as shown here. Do a double or triple knot. This is gonna be the top of our tassel. Flip it over and cut all of the loops on the bottom side, which is going to create the fringe of the tassel. As you can see here, I'm laying it down and then we're just gonna be creating that top little banded section. So I'm tying a knot really, really tight underneath our top strings and then just cutting off any excess at the bottom just to make it nice and flush and pretty. And you're going to be tying this tassel on to the scallop. You could of course just make tassels and just literally tie them directly onto the blanket. But I thought the scalloped edge added a little something else. And I just thought it was a lot cuter than just your traditional. And I love the way that this ended up turning out. So I repeated the process all the way down the side of the blanket, creating a ton of different tassels. And in the end, it just looked so chic and cute. And it just looked like a blanket that you would see at Anthro or something that would be like $98. And we made it for a fraction of the price. All you really need is yarn and a blanket that you already have or a new blanket from like Target or somewhere. For our next project, we're going to be using an iPhone cord and some macrame rope as well because I'm going to be macrame the cord that way. It is so much cuter sitting next to my couch in my living room. And what I'm starting off by doing is cutting a piece of cord that is six times the length of our phone cord and just tying it off at the top to start. And we're going to be doing a half hitch knot, which is basically where you loop the cording over. Here you go. So you kind of like loop the cording over, pull it through the backside and then pull it all the way through. It's literally the most simple knot ever. And if you want to Google it, it is the half hitch knot. And you're going to be repeating this process for the entire length of the phone cord. And the nice thing is that every time you do this, it actually starts to spiral on its way down. So the more knots you add, you're gonna see that the actual like knotting of it is spiraling, which I think is such a pretty effect. And there are a lot of different knots you could do, but I find that this one's just the most simple and it also uses the least amount of supplies. Plus we don't want our cord to be like super, super thick. So I'm gonna be wrapping it again around the base cord, pulling it through the backside and then pulling it really tightly. And as you can see here, it's kind of starting to spiral all the way down. And honestly, guys, we are just going to be repeating this process down the entire length of the phone cord. Also, if any of you guys are concerned about this being a fire hazard, you could also start the macrame about six inches from the start of your cord and end it six inches from the end of your cord. That way it has a little bit of like leeway before and after. This rope is not combustible, so I'm not too concerned about it. And it's also going to be sitting on top of my rug anyways, where the cord normally sits. So I feel like if this was to blow up for some reason, the rug would have already taken on the damage, you know? So I'm not too concerned about the phone cord. Project number three, we're going to be doing a little bit of embroidery. And this is based off of a Pinterest image that I saw, which I will link below for you guys to give original credit because I absolutely love the idea. And I just grabbed one of my embroidery hoops, which you guys saw me use in my past video. I have so many of these left over. So I was like, I'm going to use these. I also grabbed a little bit of a linen fabric and just tightened my embroidery hoop over the top of it. But you can also definitely cut up like an old shirt or repurpose something that you might already have in your home, like a bed sheet or something like that, uh, just so you don't have to go out and purchase any linen fabric, but the supplies for this project are super minimal as well. So what I'm going to start off by doing is using a pencil and just going and just kind of tracing in three little rainbow sections that I want to use. I'm going to be creating a macrame rainbow and I'm using a little bit of 
adhesive just to hold down the macrame cord for now, but you're gonna be gluing down your macrame cord on top of your original pencil line, leaving the tails long because we're gonna be using those in the end. So as you can see here, this is just to hold it down because we're actually going to be full on stitching this down all the way across. So I started off with a brown string coming up the back side, and this is just so super simple. It's just very repetitive. What you're going to be doing is coming up one side of your macrame cord and then going down the other side and just repeating the process. You're going to basically want to fill our entire rope with color. And the great thing about this is it's basically like embroidery, but you have this nice dimensional element to it because the rope is underneath. So it kind of gives like a 3D embroidered look. And I'm starting off with this kind of orange rust color and going on the outermost edge of our rainbow going all the way around And once you meet the end of that color, just flip it over and then push your needle through the back side of some of the stitching and then just pull your needle through that loop and that's going to create a knot. Just do a couple of those to secure off your thread and then you can cut it and we can start our new color. So I opted for a blue tone in the middle section here and you're just gonna be doing the same exact thing as well. Just going up one side of the rope, down the other side of the rope and just trying to make it super, super tight and make sure that every stitch is connected with the stitch prior. That way you don't see the rope in the inside and then next up we're going in with this light yellow color and you can totally opt for whatever colors you want i just thought this colorway was really cute and pretty and i'm going to be repeating the process again of just stitching up one side and down the opposite side once that is all done, you can go ahead and cut your macrame cords at a, a length that you like. I actually ended up cutting them a little bit shorter than shown here in the end. But once you cut those, you're just going to want to unravel them. And these are just going to create little fringy tassel tails to your rainbow, which are so cute. I'm obsessed with them. You could give them a little haircut and then just also trim off your excess fabric. And you can hang this up on your wall or display it on a shelf. This next product is probably my favorite and I'm starting off with some old food containers and I'm also going to be using a mixture of acrylic paints, but I'm starting off using this oatmeal container, which I'm going to be opening up. You can also cut it to completely open it and I'm just cutting off any of the excess edges because you're not going to want any area that is folded and I'm going to be placing some sage green paint down and I'm also using a nice like very thick bristle brush and that's just going to give you some texture. So I'm also adding this darker green shade on here as well and I'm I'm just painting these to kind of give them a very kind of whimsical texture, if that makes sense. I don't want them to look super realistic, but I also don't want them to look super fake at the same time. So this is my first little green one, and I'm going to be repeating the same process on another sheet as well. And keep in mind, you're also going to want to do this to the front and the back side of each of the pieces, which you'll see why in a minute here. So here's my next cactus that I'm going to be creating. This one I wanted to just be mainly white. I added a tiny, tiny bit of green in there just to add some texture. And for our third cactus, this was a mixture of both blue Blue and sage just to kind of give a quirky little vibe to it. I liked the mix of sky blue in there as well. Um, and if you do have a side that has a lot of lettering on there, what I suggest doing is laying down a coat of white paint first, letting that dry, and then going on top of it with your colors. So this is going to be the back side of one of our originals. And what I'm going to start off by doing once everything is dry is I'm going to kind of create this oblong rectangle with a rounded end. Just think about a tall cactus shape, and I'm going to be cutting it all the way down, tracing it on to the next piece, and cutting that out as well. So we're going to have two symmetrical cactus cactus pieces. You're also going to want to repeat that process on a smaller one because I just wanted to have two instead of one pot. So here are our four pieces and the detailing I'm going to be adding to this one are just some stripes. So I'm using a little bit of white with a tiny little bit of uh, mint green mixed into it. And I'm just going to be doing some stripes from the top and bottom on both sides, the front and back sides of all four of these pieces. Where the 
you can kind of see how the texture underneath just adds a little bit of something to it. That's why we mixed and used that wide bristle brush. And for the next cactus, I'm creating these three shapes here, which are kind of just like organic, ovally rectangles. And for the detailing on this, I'm just doing some V shapes kind of to act as spikes. And I'm using a black paint for this. I just did it on all three pieces. Keep in mind doing it on both the front and back side. And for my last one, I'm just also creating these um, random shapes as well. This just kind of gives you one of those cactuses that kind of have those like fan looking shapes on them, uh, which you're going to see in a minute here. And for this one, I just added detailings with some polka dots and a light white color. So what you're gonna do to connect these is you're gonna cut halfway up one and then halfway down the other one and just slide them into each other. From one of the pieces, you're gonna cut from the bottom up and from the other piece, you're gonna cut from the top down only halfway though. So that way when you slide them together, they connect perfectly and create this like 3D object. So I'm gonna do it on the smaller piece as well. For these ones, all you need to do is create a tiny little slit and you can just slip it right onto the paper. This is paper guys or like cardboard, so it is not heavy at all. So you don't need to worry about having them super secure, but you can definitely glue them if you want to. However, I just cut a slit, slipped it onto the piece and it seemed to stay perfectly for me. And how I ended up doing this was I actually used my hydro tipped pots for my last video and I poured some oatmeal into each of the pots, which is great because it's nice and dense. So it's gonna hold your cactuses in place. So as you can see, I pushed this cactus down. I added a second one in there just because I thought it looked so cute with two and I repeated the process putting the oatmeal in there and I personally think the oatmeal is just a really nice touch. It kind of looks almost like rocky sands but it's also at the same time very natural in color so it's not too distracting from the cactuses and that finishes off our cardboard cactuses. Alrighty, so I hope that you enjoyed those projects and it gave you a little bit of inspiration with maybe some stuff you can use at your home to create some DIY projects just to spice up your room or your living room or wherever you at just a little bit more because I know this kind of hit us really quick to where a lot of us probably weren't prepared and now we're just living in a space that maybe we were trying to get around to redecorating. So I'm hoping that some of this can give you guys some inspiration on how to add a little bit more personality and pizzazz to your space. And if you did enjoy this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Would you guys like to see another video like this? I could definitely try to think of more ideas and projects to do with stuff that you already have at your house. And I think that that's really all. So thank you guys so, so, so much for watching and supporting. I love you all so much. And I hope that this gave you a little bit of inspiration and maybe some positivity to your day. And if you are somebody that has to work during this time, whether you are a medical professional or you work at a grocery store, you guys are all heroes. Thank you so much for all of your help and support in this world and this crazy and I'm honestly very very thankful that you're putting like the time and effort into this because i know a lot of people that work in these industries can be definitely scared for sure um and i want to thank you guys and i love you all so much so have an amazing rest of your day catch you guys in the next one bye guys